Well, it's a great pleasure to um, welcome Nicholas Soames uh, on VE Day, the 75th anniversary of VE Day, um, Churchill's grandson, and just to have a word about this uh, extraordinary day. Uh, and I guess my first question, Nicholas, is what does this day mean for you? Well, it was a, an extraordinary milestone in the, in the life of Britain, of Europe, and of the world. It was the end of a great war, the second great war. Uh, its happiness and its joy was tempered with the terrible loss, losses that had been suffered by Britain, by her allies, um, in what had been a very painful war. So the celebrations were tinged, they were unbridled of unbridled joy, but they were tinged with great sadness. So I think we can look back at, at um, an extraordinary moment, which really led to the foundation of the modern Europe that we live in today. Um, and it's right that we pause to remember what it was that brought us to this moment, I think. Indeed. And what do you think it means for the relationship between Britain and France? Well, for a time in our lives, that relationship was personified by the relationship uh, through thick and thin, of Churchill and de Gaulle. And all Churchill's biographers have all noted that he had a love affair with France, and it lasted nearly 70 years and longer, probably. Um, and France was very, very dear to him. And he fought shoulder to shoulder with the French in two world wars. Um, he, uh, despite his his, despite his difficulties with the goal, he greatly admired him and he greatly admired France. Um, and I think that this war that we were both in for the cause of freedom and for the liberation of Europe was really personified actually by uh, the extraordinary moments in Paris on the 11th of November, I think uh, in 1945, when Churchill and de Gaulle walked down the Champs Elysees together. Yeah. to a rapturous reception. Yeah. I think that was one of the greatest moments in Churchill's life. And I was reading in Andrew Roberts's brilliant biography, my grandfather, that on the two days that he was in Paris, those two days, he was never not crying. He was so carried away with the emotion of the liberation of France and this wonderful feeling, which he must have had of a Europe about to be reborn, even with all its terrible carnage and difficulty, that was very, very moving for him. And my mother told me that it was actually probably one of the most moving. She was there and, and she said it was one of the most moving days of his entire life. Gosh. Did, he, did Churchill talk to you about his memories of those days? Do you remember him, him talking about the... No. But, no. No. No, he didn't. But my mother did, definitely. Yeah. And, and of course, my mother shared his great love for France. Um, spoke very good French. Nobody speaks perfect French except the French, but she spoke very good French. Uh, and she loved, she absolutely loved France. She inherited her father's passion for France. And she often talked about it. I mean, she told me um, about the day when the general presented my grandfather with the Order of Liberation, which was a sort of unique day in, in his history and, and to a certain extent in the general's history. And of course, his relationship with France predated the general's preeminence all the way through the First World War and, and way beyond. But to him, France was the symbol of something very, very special, very special, very unique in Europe. And that was reflected in much of the conversation my mother and I used to have about France. You know, it, it was a devotion, an absolute devotion to France. Indeed, in the early part of the war, my grandfather suggested the, literally the amalgamation of France and, and, and England together to try to save uh, Europe from a terrible fate. And obviously, this VE Day, this anniversary is taking place in this, these extraordinary circumstances of COVID-19, coronavirus, lockdown, all of that. Do you think that gives it a special poignancy and a special message this time? I do, actually, funny enough. I think it's, 
interesting to see, and I, I, I don't know if it's the same in France, but it's very, very interesting to observe it in, in Britain at the moment, a, a tremendous coming together of people in the face of common adversity. And I think the, that moment um, at the end of the war, a VE day, Victory in Europe day, was an extraordinary moment in, in Britain's life because it marked on the one hand this tremendous fulfillment of a country that had stood alone for quite a long time against a terrible threat, which had dragged its people together through thick and thin and incredible hardship uh, to a moment of victory. And it was a, a sort of unity which has never really been, I think, reflected since, because I don't think that this country, and I, I imagine France, has ever been through anything so terrible as this, inflicted by way of a medical illness, which has drawn generations together, families together, with all the difficulties and complexities that that raises, but it has drawn people closer together. And I think that is an added poignancy in the 75th anniversary year, that we should find ourselves drawn together by a terrible threat. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for spending the time. And um, well, we'll be thinking of our forebears on uh, this VE day, but also- We will. Circumstances. Thank you, Nick. Very good. Thank you, Ed, very much.